Hi, I'm Chetz and I'm the server guy. And today I want to talk about building a file server for your lab or home and uh, the options, whatever, to buy an old server or uh, build your own machine from PC parts or buy, buying a new server, which is not really recommended. I'll explain about the advantages and the disadvantages from those options. So let's start with buying um, PC parts and building your own. Is it a good solution? Well, if you're going to use ZFS or ZFS, depends where you live, and you want to build uh, your machines from that, so you'll take um, two U rack and uh, just stick 12 disk drives and uh, maybe two SSDs for cache and stuff like that, it's a good solution, uh, especially if you're not planning to grow and add more drives. If you want to add more drives after those 12 drives, you'll probably buy a JBOD and connect using a mini SAS connector with a card inside your host's machine. That's a pretty good solution, but the biggest problem with this solution is the memory. The memory today prices are very, very expensive. And uh, it really depends on which processors you want to use. So many machines will let you grow up to 64 gigabytes, some up to 32 gigabytes. Most of the people will say, okay, 32 gigabytes sounds good. Sounds good enough. And it is a good solution, but it really depends on your needs. If you're running, for example, two, three, four ESXi servers, physical servers, and you want to have a one ZFS file server that will host all the files and everything, and you want a 10 gigabit connection, from all the machines uh, using either a switch or point to point with a duck, you'll have a problem with 32 gigabytes. Um, ZFS basically loves RAM. And by default on Linux, and I think in FreeBSD, um, by default it takes about half of your memory. You can configure it to take more, let's say 80% if you're not using this ZFS machine for other tasks. ZFS wants memory as it, this is its main cache. There's uh, another cache, it's called L2 Arc, which is a read cache, not a write cache. So contrary to other solutions like XFS or ext 4 which you can uh, stick an SSD and uh, use it with the LVM and it will be both read and write cache. ZFS doesn't have a write cache. It has uh, the main memory. So a PC is a great solution, but the biggest problem is the memory. And if you'll take an old server, let's say Dell R610 or HP uh, G7, DL360 or DL380. I, I recommend DL380 because you can insert more cards uh, compared to the DL360 where you can only add two cards. The memory prices for DDR3 are considerably cheaper compared to DDR4. So you can find in eBay, for example, a 256 gigabyte kit with a slower uh, running memory like PC8500 uh, for about $500 to $600, which is pretty great. And you can use, for example, 220 or 240 gigabytes for cache for ZFS, for example, and <coughs> you'll have great performance. Uh, whatever you have uh, for mechanical disk drives or 20. And if you want to use 10 gigabit connection, this memory could help you a lot. And uh, trust me, I had tests with FIO. If you know this program, I highly recommend using it. 
this will show you about your read, write, IOPS and everything uh, that your machine can perform. The old machines, you can buy them for, uh, I don't know, between um, 200 to 400 500 dollars a machine with two processors and some minimum memory and maybe some drives but there's a problem with them and their biggest disadvantage is that they're PCI 2 so that means for example that uh, NVMe drives uh, you won't be able to use uh, you won't have the bandwidth to fully utilize the NVMe drive uh, you cannot boot from NVMe, NVMe drives anyway. Um, servers like the DL360 or D380G7 uh, have a built-in uh, RAID controller that only supports SATA 2. And that could be a problem if you want to stick some SSDs and you will get only half the performance, which could be a bit of waste. You could, of course, uh, just stick another RAID card and connect uh, the backplane to the RAID card, but the, the other problem with it is that, um, again, we're uh, getting into bottlenecks because you could stick the RAID card and you have the full speed but if you add 10 gigabit cards, for example, and you'll connect two machines to this ZFS uh, solution, you'll probably have some bottlenecks, so you won't get two 10 gigabit connection. You'll probably have something like two 7 gigabit connection or something like that. That could provide a problem or not. If you're using only gigabit and you're just using uh, network teaming, for example, then sure, it will work perfectly. Now, should you use JBoard or not? It really depends. If you're not planning to grow and you're only planning to buy a 2U chassis and stick a motherboard in it and everything in it, whatever it is, the old Xeon with the DDR3 memory that I mentioned, and you're not planning to grow above the 12 uh, drives that uh, you're going to stick it in. So, um, yeah, um, a 2U solution is great. But on the other hand, a JBOD, for example, could give you a solution for um, high availability. Uh, if we're talking about ZFS, uh, I'll leave a link in the YouTube uh, description about um, a way that you can have two ZFS servers with one JBOD, which will give you high availability. Uh, naturally, if this JBOD fails, everything fails. But it's a pretty good solution. So it really it really is up to you. On the next video, I'll show how to basically configure the ZFS and how to use it and uh, have a recommendation for a new ZFS book for Linux. And uh, you can uh, purchase it and use it. I highly recommend this book to read and use it. It's great. That's it for now. Thank you. I'm sorry about my English. I'm improving it as we speak. And uh, I'll see you next one.